Sweet. Hello and welcome to Lobby's GDC Sessions, some special little podcast we put together because the uh, Game Developers Conference is on just a couple of blocks away and there's a bunch of really interesting developers and media people in town. So we said, why not get a few of them in here, record some videos and also put them on the Lobby podcast feed. So if you're listening to this, thank you so much. We've got a bunch more of these coming. And if you're watching, make sure you subscribe because we've got uh, two or three more of these coming later in the week. And I'm very happy to be starting this off with the man of the hour. Mr. Marcin Novinsky, congratulations. You must be sick of winning Game of the Year awards. Uh, the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt wins yet another one. Congratulations. Uh, dzień dobry, witamy Państwa bardzo <laughs> serdecznie. Dzisiejszy podcast będzie po polsku, więc jeśli nie znacie polskiego, niestety nie będzie tłumaczenia. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know what I said. The... No, I, I said that today's podcast will be fully in Polish, so if you don't know, if you don't speak Polish, uh, uh, yeah, there will not be a translation, but seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for having me here today. No, thanks for coming in on such short notice as well. Uh, all I can say is CD Projekt Red is the better. Is, is that was that pronounced right? Is that does that work? Oh, we could work on it. Yeah, uh, CD Projekt Red. CD Projekt. CD Projekt. CD Projekt Red. Red. Oh, so Red. Red. CD Projekt Red. All right. It's, yeah. A couple of drinks in me. I might yeah, get a little okay, better. Okay. Uh, congratulations on winning yet another award. Uh, what did it feel like standing up there? No, 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 no. no. Uh, let, let's stop here for a moment. Not another award. Uh, 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 game of the Year, the Game Developer's Choice here in the US. It's it's really, really very meaningful because mm. um, uh, it's, you know, among the, the top developers well, here and among the votes from the development community, mm. uh, we are getting the game of the year. So this is special. Uh, this is not just another award. And, and we are very, very honored and very humbled. And actually, last night during the ceremony, mm. I thought like, yeah, it might not be us, actually. Uh, oh, for a moment, I thought it's yeah. her, so her story, but they were not on the <laughs> list, so they didn't make it. Yeah, yeah they didn't get, get that <laughs> wrong last time, like at the Game Awards. They got only five last night, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you won, you know, we'll get to the sort of Game of the, the GDC Awards in a second, but you won Game of the Year at a lot of places during a year where it was quite hard to win Game of the Year. I mean, yep. you had a Metal Gear Solid game, you had a Fallout game, yep. you had Rocket League, which a lot of people were very, very interested in. Uh, that must make it feel even better, right? It's great. Yeah. It's great. And what was it like being on that stage? Considering, had you been on that GDC stage before? No, like, no, no, winning no, anything? No, no, no. I mean, uh, which one, obviously not. And, and which two, um, I don't remember. I, I think we're not even nominated. Hmm. So you've come a long way. In, in Definitely. That's, that's actually what I said during my speech that. Uh, in our case, you had to make three games. <laughs> we had to make three games to, 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 to get onto this stage. Yeah. And I was I was thinking about the leap between those, uh, the the Witcher Three Wild Hunt and specifically the Witcher Witcher Two, which is, uh, you what you've done something which I don't think many studios have managed to do, which is you had this very you know f focused role playing game with a big fan base around it, but you were still known as like oh they're like that cokey European studio who kind of like makes like this like really hardcore traditional RP RPG, but in the space of Okay, that's that's a good uh, US point of view. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah but but that's actually you're, you're you're very right. But look, your I mean, your market now in America is huge. Like you you've gone it's, from it's, that. It's, it's it's number one market in the right. world for us. It's 40 percent, or even a little bit above forty percent of our business. But which I'm guessing you know, it wasn't it, with two, right? It it definitely wasn't. But mm. uh, it's also it is partly due to the game mm. and um, maybe the fact that when we released the PC version. Um, uh, the immersion curve wasn't so smooth, and I still remember one of the reviews saying when, when the, the editor, who, who was a gamer, mm. came playing games every day, that he died 50 times in the prologue. So <laughs> we probably made it a little bit too difficult. But come on, he should have played on easy. Eh? We were tough guys back there. Um, but uh, uh, the um, the fact, I mean, the sort of the main problem with going massive in the US was the fact that we're PC only. Right, yeah. So then it is really tough. It probably, I don't know, five years earlier, it would have been easier, but getting into retail, getting the, the appropriate uh, budgets, and, and I'm not talking about gigantic marketing sp mm. spending, but just just for people to notice the game, it, it is really tough because, I mean, you guys, uh, sorry, you guys might like it, so you might write about it, but still, then the gamer is coming to the store, yeah. predominantly, I don't know, GameStop or going to Amazon or Best Buy, and they don't see the game. It's mm. somewhere on the shelf. And actually, you know, we are coming here for years, and, and that was probably one of the most frustrating parts. Mm. 
uh, on my job, like doing the store checks and going to the store and which are which are W. Okay, it's over here oh, yeah, at yeah, the very yeah. bottom. <laughs> we, 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 we should have called it a Witcher. <laughs> uh, it would have been a bit better. But um, here in the US, especially, you, you need to go with, uh, with a proper budget. And then in order to have this budget, you have to go multi-platform. Right. And then, you know, I mean, the, the, the PC gaming, it's, it's great here, but it's mostly digital. So to make the game visible and, and to go up against the big guys, mm. uh, be, I don't know, but that's the release, it's EA, Ubisoft. You, you have to be multi-platform. And I think that was the main problem uh, with The Witcher 2 to, in terms of visibility and, yeah. and, and massiveness, uh, particularly here uh, in the US, what was not really the case in Europe. I mean, you eventually got Witcher 2 on consoles as well. Yes, but, but it, then again, it yeah. was a year gap, mm. so you didn't have this sort of joint marketing budget. The, the fact that Witcher 3 was, uh, first of all, great game, big game, but then coming at the same time, all three platforms, so we could uh, really push it out there mm. and then, you know, you are an important game. Also, if you look how, how the retailers look at it, uh, it's like, eh, it's just a PC game. Yeah, yeah. And then it's automatically different. Oh, it's a multi-platform, it's, it's the big RPG. And, then and it gets the posters. Yeah, then exactly, exactly, people exactly. People in the store exactly, know to tell exactly. people about it. Yeah. I mean, now we're at the stage where people, you know, presumably before would have been like, oh, I want to play a role-playing game when they talk about like Skyrims and things like that. No. You, you must go into a GameStop now and people say, oh, have you heard of Witcher 3 or Wild Hunt? Yeah, that's... Uh, I think you know uh, gamers do not realize it, but it really it really takes a lot of effort to 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 to, uh, to get to a situation to a position where uh, when you come to a GameStop and say, "Hey, can you recommend me a good mm. RPG game?" and and they say that's The Witcher, <laughs> guys, believe me, it's it's not easy and it's not cheap either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but in those like four or five years or however long it was, <clears throat> you did end up turning what was like th those ga like Witcher Two was a fantastic game and the people like it reviewed well and people who played it really loved it. But the the delta, the gap between that and where you are now uh, is huge. I, I think I think you are you're very right in what you're saying and and then okay so one thing was making a great game and, right. and that's always the the first and 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 uh, the utmost important thing like without but that. then getting it out there and getting people to talk about it because the perception for example of the retail was hey let's look how well the witcher 2 sold mm. and compare it to skyrim <clears throat> um, yeah, okay that's a small cocky hardcore game from yeah. uh from somewhere in europe from uh, Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Yeah, it's from Russia. Somewhere around Russia. You're about right. By the way, where is Russia? <laughs> <laughs> hey, people call me Scottish all the time. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're Scottish, aren't you? <laughs> On St. Patrick's Day of all yeah, days. Yeah, no, 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 but, but, uh, uh, but seriously, so mm. um, sort of making sure that people commit to it and they, they want to put it out there in mm. front of the store that 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 was also that was also quite challenging and and although we had i mean great support from our partner here uh, Warner Brothers mm. and and they have some muscle that's also very important and again it, it's probably not not the daily concern of gamers but thanks to it we are able to go wider and get more recognition and visibility and then more gamers because of that play yeah. the game and uh, to a certain extent, because of that, the game got even more popular. So it's like you know, um, uh, like a domino effect. Yeah, in a, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's a domino effect, so were, to speak. Were, so. were you surprised about how successful it was, or how well it received it was? Yes, really. Yes, I mean, you, you can never plan that. You can mm. never expect that, and and I and I don't think you should, because uh, mm, if you plan that something will be the best game in the world and you will sell the most in the world. I think you have an ego problem. Mm. And uh, we always try to, 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 to be humble uh, as much as we can. And, and humble, I, I don't mean uh, humble not talking that our game is going to be great, but we don't want to make assumptions. Yes, we'll rule the world. Yeah. And of course, it, it's great in our industry because you show the bits and pieces. Uh, we took to guys like you and... Uh, we take your critical opinion, and then we go to the to the uh, trade shows, be it BD3, Gamescom, and whatnot. And these are the sort of early early metrics. Was the hype there? Did they like it? Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if you if you remember that uh, every time at E3 we're handing you a questionnaire and asking right, about yeah. your opinion. We're really analyzing all this uh, all these votes very carefully and seeing like they like this, they don't like that. Maybe we should tweak something. Maybe we should change something. So it's a co constant iteration. But then comes the the day one, and mm. the, and that's the moment of truth. Uh, yeah, and then you sold what was it like? Four million copies in the first. <coughs> we, two sold, weeks or uh, we sold. We uh, sold six million copies in the first six weeks. How much of that? Do you, this very 
particular question, but do you know how much of that was digital against retail? Like, uh, it you... totally depends on the territory in the US. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and it depends on the time uh, of of the of the. Um, I mean, it depends on uh, on on the on the precise moment because uh, initially, uh, especially a lot of the core audience is getting digital here in the US. So mm. I, I would say in the US is was was probably initially sixty forty forty percent being digital. So huge okay, digital, wow. yeah, digital okay. went really well. And from what we heard uh, uh, from the f uh, first parties, because I mean. PC mostly was digital, obviously yeah. here in the US, uh, was that we were one of the best cases. And and I think when, when gamers plan the purchase these days, they factor in a few things. Mm. So if they want to keep the game, they want to really own it and not just play it and trade it back, they go for digital. Yeah. If they think, hey, I'll just have some fun for a moment, I'll trade it back and I'll get some money back, they go for the for the retail. Mm. So a lot of people really wanted to own the which I think it also shows how strong the community is and, and I'm always very grateful for that. Yeah. Uh we were talking about hype before. It, it definitely seemed from at least our perspective that The Witcher 3 over the course of like a long period, like three years, was kind of like ramping, 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 and then going up. You, you kind of seem to have the opposite problem with cyberpunk, right? Where like you barely said anything about it, but people are like freaking are you, are out you, about are you, it. Are you suggesting uh, uh, a different curve here? <laughs> <laughs> but right, people are like, you've shown one, yeah. one trailer, right? Yeah. Like one really good trailer. Yeah. And I even feel like when that trailer was shown, people probably didn't register who CD Projekt were. Whereas now, somebody sees that and they say, said that project at Ed, and they go, ah, oh, The Witcher 3 people. Right now, so they, even more. Right, right, right now they, they, they see this trailer uh, from a tough, totally different angle. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that, that's going to be real. So I think, I, you know, honestly speaking, again, I, I, I really want to be humble. So right now we have the success of The Witcher 3. People mm. love it, people played it, and, and it's even more responsibility. And that's what uh, we, we, we had a, we had a uh, conference um, uh, last week talking about our financial stuff and, and our strategy. And Adam Madoski said that, you know, it, it's, first of all, I mean, the fact that Witcher performed so well allows us to be even more ambitious with mm. Cyberpunk, but right now it's, it's on our shoulders to deliver here. So yeah, we, we, we're, the next time you will hear about Cyberpunk, we'll show mm. something and it must be fucking great. Yeah. I mean, what do you mean by, like, how can you say more ambitious than Witcher? I mean, Witcher was like a, like a I was 130 hours when I finished no, it. No, Witcher, just... Witcher 3 was like, you know, a tiny DLC, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, even your DLCs are big, uh, it seems like. No, they're expansions, you know. So let's, oh yeah, sorry, let, let's, sorry. Sorry, let's, the DLCs are for free, expansions is what you pay for. <laughs> yeah, if everyone could follow suit, that'd be great. Oh, yeah. uh, but what do you mean by bigger? Like, what do you mean by? I'm not, I'm, I'm, no, 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 no! Come on, we have the stuff here. We're not talking about <laughs> cyberpunk. I'm not. I'm not talking. I'm not talking bigger. It's. Uh, I think people really expect something great, and and that's what we have to uh, stand up to and 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 deliver. So um, that's so let's put a cork uh, in that. Stop here and let's continue our very interesting conversation. Danny. La last question about well, it, and it's not really tricky, a, Danny. Is uh, <laughs> is the studio excited about working on Cyberpunk? Yeah, they definitely are. They definitely it's are. Big are shift, at, yes. right? It must be exciting. It is super exciting. It is super exciting. And don't forget, you know, that we're working on it for quite some time already. So mm. there was a lot of people who were, you know, maybe I don't know, drawing the the, the weapons or working in the medieval environment for years, and suddenly, you know, guns and ammo yeah. and mutants and implants. So that's, that's cool. Excellent. And you're excited about it as well? Yeah, I'm excited a lot. I'm excited a lot and um, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, prepping my, my Cyberpunk books collection and, and, and I, have a, I have a solid plan of reading a lot of that, like uh, especially my favorite, uh, uh, so Philip K. Dick. Uh, mm. r r right now I'm, I'm, I'm into the, the Man from the High Castle because of the, <laughs> of the Amazon show, so I, I, I want to finish reading it before I start watching the yeah. show. Uh, but yeah, then then it's the whole cyberpunk all over again. Excellent. Uh, while we're on the on the topic of putting corks in conversations, you also mentioned like a, a th <laughs> another project you might be working on as well. D did we? Yeah, apparently. Yeah, and, and the, this project is a cork actually, and we have to put this cork <laughs> where it places. You know? is, is it, are you releasing Gwent as a toy? Because you said it's in a new genre as well. The 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 okay the the. And the name of the project is Project Cork. <laughs> so let's cork it here, Danny. 
is there he's good he's are, really good you're better that's the problem <laughs> is there how does it feel coming off this like big game you worked on for four or five years and then <clears> you're like because you're an independent studio and you know it's was it 250 folks you have working at warsaw is it oh um, like on, on the dev side it's okay. over 300 oh, really? in total the group is almost 500 is there a worry when you like say, okay, we've got, you know, Blood and Wine still isn't finished, and then you've got like, well, I'm, presumably it's like close enough, and then Cyberpunk, and then this other project. Is that, is that as big as you want to go? Because like that seems like a lot. I think um, as long as we feel um, we, can, we can unleash our creativity and we have control over it, mm. um, I think we're good. And, and, and you will see when we'll show something. Yeah. So you'll, you'll be the judge. Have you had people interested in like, you guys have been incredibly successful and you're almost like very staunchly independent. Have you had like people try and come in and like- you Yeah, know, a queue of them. Yeah. Yeah, and they're lining up in front of those, honestly speaking. Yeah. What's that like? That's normal. I mean, you know, it, it, it's funny. I, I, I remember when we were in, in, in deep trouble, it was probably 2008, we were still running the distribution businesses. There, there was a big economical slowdown or yeah. even a crisis in European Union. So we had to restructure. And at that time, um, we were talking to a lot of possible investors, really needed some capital to, to finish off Witcher 2 and then restructure our distribution businesses. And there was really nobody that wanted to work with us. Mm. We ultimately ended up with... Um, Entering this, the, 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 the stock exchange, uh, 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 getting the funding and, you know, maintaining our independence. But it was a hard lesson. And I learned there really well that people are offering you money when you really don't need it. Right. And we really don't need it and we wouldn't want it. We, we, um, we were never looking for, for anybody from outside to come and, and, and enter uh, the company with, with, with funding because we would have to give part of our independence away. Yeah. And in all what we're doing, like, for example, we started the discussion talking about uh, going directly to retail and talking to them. Yes, so we're mm. talking directly to retailers. Of, of course, you know, we have a distribution partners all around the world, but when we are hyping the game, we're talking about the game, we want to make sure that um, this is our energy, this is our message. And uh, before, when, on, on, on which one, uh, when we had a publishing partner, we couldn't do that. And yeah, it yeah. was so frustrating. And then what was delivered to the market was not really truly ours. Mm. Because, I don't know, we couldn't put this in the box or do that with the box. These are small things, but they matter. And yeah. um, you remember probably the, 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 the letter, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, so sometimes things like that, you, you, you cannot imagine that how hard it is to convince somebody else out there who thinks that this letter doesn't make sense. Mm. I'm, I'm not... I don't want to go into details here, but we had a couple of discussions like that. Yeah. So um, that that's also part of the independence, despite the fact that maybe they'll think, hey, Witcher 3 is too big. Just cut it in half and you'll make more money. Yeah. Or but like, that, why are you giving away 25 pieces of DLC yeah. for free? Or oh, yeah. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a perfect example. Yeah. Come on. Uh, we can we can uh, come up with a what a nice Excel sheet and uh, what do you want <laughs> uh, two million dollars out of it? I probably we could we could make it ten in Excel. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. What what was on the other side of that sort of transaction now the DLC yeah. the the free DLC? What was the the onus behind it was was it goodwill yeah. mostly? Yeah, it was like respecting your fan base and what's it like on the other side of that transaction? Do you think that people uh, do you think it gave more you know? buying power to the consumer to buy this game? Like they felt like it was a better deal or do you think they, they felt like they were taken care of? Like, is that something you'd do again? Like, and how do you DLC? feel? I, I thought that it was, you respected me as a consumer is what I felt. And I don't feel that way a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. <laughs> Thank Just you for answering your, your question. question for you. Yeah, but it's, you know, oh, some people will not notice it. Some right. people will feel like you do. Some people will maybe not trade their game back. Mm. And some people, they'll maybe talk to their friends and tell them how cool it is. And that, that's all it is. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's great. I had a, I had a discussion well, a month ago maybe with uh, one of the publishers. Um, I have a good friend there. And you know, we have a lunch. And they say, wow, Marcin, it was such a smart plan with these DLCs. Mm. And I said, <laughs> hey, but 
it, it wasn't a plan. It was and we just. I mean, of course, we had to plan the the production, but we just wanted to do this. Mm. We thought it's a genuine move, and so we, we think it's a cool standard. We would like other people to do it. But a lot of people started analyzing, like also from a more financial perspective, right. that that it makes sense. But if if they do something like that, and even the motivation is that just like, I don't know, they'll put another 2% of, of, mm. uh, of additional sales in their exhibition. I'm good with that. It's fine. Yeah. Just, I would like to see more, more, more things like that happening. I, I would like to see it in other games as well. But if they, do it, if they do it for that reason, they're sort of missing the point as well, right? Because the point wasn't about finances. But maybe they'll understand yeah. one day. <laughs> Yeah. And still, gamers will get some free DLCs, and it will be cool. Yeah, it's kind of sad that that's like what you did was something so outside of what we're used to, right? Yeah, that's. Uh, um, I remember. I think it was it was uh, in your comment section, and mm. uh, so we released a statement uh, saying that there are free DLCs. And one of the first comments was one guy. Hey, they must have ripped it out from the game, and right <laughs> now they are giving it for free just for the sake of great PR. Yeah. And then I see some people talking about it, and then somebody said, "Man, but why do you worry? It's for free." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and this closed the discussion. But it was so beautiful. So people are so suspicious, not mm. because they're suspicious um, by nature, but uh, because th there were so many different and strange. Uh, and maybe you know purely monetization oriented tricks uh, performed on them in the past yeah. that they are just hey somebody's giving something for free it smells it yeah. must be a trick yeah, so no there was no trick and i think we've proven that with, yeah. with the witcher 3. the other thing that i feel like a lot of big publishers are doing at the moment as well is trying to create big online games where they suck people back in and again and again and, and then use that as a funnel to sell extra content i mean like destiny is a pretty good example of that uh you know but every game seems to be i mean ubisoft have basically put online connectivity into every single game they make regardless of whether or not it should or not you guys don't deal in online multiplayer uh it, it seems like anyway is it is that intentional is there any sort of do you feel like you're I missing mean, you know, out on something? We, we do not do multiple projects we do not release very often so yes we're definitely interested in extending the the time gamers are, are are spending in in our games and whether we do it uh, with the online functionality or not we'll see as right now we did it with Dex and don't forget that uh this are this is the third uh installment of the series mm. and this is the first time we're doing expansions all right yeah. uh, we haven't done it before just because we didn't have resources for that so mm. we're doing expansions our way and if one day we'll do online, we'll do online our way. Mm. It will be different. <laughs> do you think then, like looking forward into, you know, you were talking about Cyberpunk and your, your other projects, is this the kind of the end for The Witcher for a while then? Like once yeah, Blood and Wine is out? Definitely, definitely, that's, that, that's a closure. And, you know, I was asked about it before, if there'll be Witcher 4 or whatnot, but uh, I'm clearly saying, yeah, we, are, we, we love the world. We're mm. huge fans of, of Sapkowski's writings. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if something will happen, maybe somewhere down the line, but uh, we, we don't have any anything planned. Honestly mm. speaking, there is nothing uh, we are working on right now. I think we, we need to rest. We spent the last, what, 14 years in, yeah, in yeah. this world. Uh, we so, love it, but right now is the cyberpunk time and, and we have really to put everything uh, we've got and then some uh, yeah. and deliver here. It's a little bit sad to say goodbye to Geralt and... Oh, I was crying just before the interview with you, just, just a little. <laughs> but no. it's like, it's your, it's your magnum opus, right? It's like, you're standing on it the is, GDC is, stage is, because but, but you know, of those okay, games. Okay, okay. So let's, uh, let's bring an example. Mm. You're watching your favorite TV series and uh, they tell you that it will end mm. and it's ending and it's kaboom. It's, it's great ending. It's really ending. Mm. And you understand that it's over, and you accept it, and you have a closure, and it's great. Mm. Mm, so for me, that's the pre uh, preferred uh, scenario. And in contrary, you have the TV series, which goes on and on yeah. and on. And it's like, you know, spaghetti western going for 10 years. <laughs> and then at a certain time, you drop out, and, and, and you don't want to have anything to do with that. Mm. And I think we've seen it with some games yeah. recently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, I mean, how many Call of Duties are we deep in? Or Assassin's Creed, you say the same thing as well. So you guys are, like, is, that's important to you to, I guess, have that really good IP 
that, that I think stay strong even if you're not using it. Yes, of course, and and so uh, maybe maybe we'll we'll come back. Maybe we'll tell some different stories at some point. But, but right now, really, I think we we've we've promised uh, Cyberpunk a long time ago, mm. and and right now it's, it's it's the time to do some work here. Do do you think Witcher fans will play Cyberpunk? Do you think I definitely, fantasy fans? I definitely, will? I definitely hope so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all about telling great stories and 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 delivering great experiences. Yeah, so I, I don't think people are like, hey, I'm only into fantasy RPGs. If there's anything else, I will never touch it. No, <laughs> yeah. it's like, wow, that's the cool game. I mean, that's, a good a good game. About us, yeah, yeah, and a good game will get people yeah. to play. Like I remember, Oblivion was a game that, like, there were friends of mine who only played first-person yeah. shooters, but because it was a good game, like they exactly. never touched like that Tolkien shit. But like they were all so, loving so, like, Oblivion. You know, people who play Skyrim they probably don't play Fallout, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that point, actually, uh, last week in your presentation, you had a goal that was that CD Projekt would be one of the three biggest developers in the, in the world. Are you there uh, yet? I'm not sure how is it how it was translated to English. <laughs> right. uh, um, I would say that the one of the best three best developers will be yeah. probably. I, I don't want to use the, the scale because it's meaningless. What uh, if we'll have a headcount of ten thousand? Then then we sort of fulfill this goal. Sorry, yes, I yeah. I, I, I meant best yeah. in quality, not not in terms of size. <laughs> Do you think you're there? I mean, uh, the awards would say you're there, at least in 2015. Yeah, but. It, uh, uh, I, I really think we have we have uh, something more to prove. Uh, and I was asked this question before, and we actually had internally a discussion mm. uh, who we would think is is uh, the role model for for us. And and really, when I look what Rockstar right. uh, achieved, uh, uh, I would love us to be there. And and having the Witcher franchise is is definitely not enough to yeah. say that we are there. So I think let's let's wait and see for Cyberpunk, and and then we'll judge. Are you more or less stressed now than you were like ten years ago? Because you've got now got decent bit of success and money in the bank, and but you see, you seem to still be setting these high goals for yourself, like as a company. Hmm. No, actually, you know, the level of stress ten years ago, which was was very different, because quite often we we're fighting for survival. We're mm. doing a lot of different things, and then you know, like that. Mm, uh, moving from the distribution business to the games development, I think. That's where we want to be. We know right now exactly what we want to do. We want to uh, develop amazing storytelling experiences and great games and deliver them directly to gamers. So that's also is part of it. And I think the, the, the worst, at least for me, it's when I struggled and I wasn't sure what we should be doing. So right. we're doing a lot of things. And then you're working this, you know, 14 hour days and then you build something for a year or two and then half of it falls apart mm. and then you restructure. Oh my God, no. No, I, 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 lo I love the place uh, where we are today and uh, well, mm, well, we, we are happy. Of course, uh, um, there, is, there is a lot of, uh, I don't want to call it stress. I would say maybe, maybe self-inflicted uh, pressure. Right, yeah. Uh, but, it, but it's good. That's, uh, that's uh, what motivates us and that's... Uh, what will never allow us to to be lazy because I mean we, we are reaching high since the very beginning of the company and 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 right now we just have proofs like these are words that you mentioned at the very beginning of our conversation that uh, that we are on the right path. Mm. Do those awards mean a lot to the team back in Warsaw? A lot. A lot. Really? You, you, you can't imagine. What was please it, what? please factor in uh, that. We we don't we're, we are coming from Poland. Yes, mm. I don't want to say I don't want it to sound that we have complexes or anything like that. But in a way, we have more to prove. Yeah, because uh, we are coming from a country where you know games development didn't have such a history. We didn't have access to all these tools, resources. So mm. everything we're doing had to always be way more global and way more thought through. Yeah. I'd say an American company, an American developer could release a game and if it was successful in the US, like, phew, yeah, okay, they're done. Yeah. And maybe, you know, five years down the line on the next game or, or, or the third game in a row, they would do some European localizations to these strange languages. Yes? <laughs> uh, and and I, want, I don't want to say that's the general thinking, but the, I've seen a lot of cases like yeah. that. But, but the size of the market w was automatically... Mm, making it easier for you to success just locally. For Poland, we yeah. could have never succeeded with Witcher 1 just in Poland. So initially, 
uh, from the very beginning, uh, we said, okay, we want our games to be played all around the world. And it was easier for us for you in Europe. And mm. then uh, US came with the, the success in US came really commercial success so, uh, with The Witcher 3. So we're really happy with that. And then make, this makes people proud. And, and yesterday, so we got two awards, the uh, game of the year and the best technical te yeah. technology. And uh, one of our guys, uh, actually one of the key programmers, he was he was uh, picking it up, and he he said like, "Shit, I couldn't believe uh, it would be better than Dice." <laughs> and that's you know, the, yeah, yeah. Th this is the this is the real shit. Yeah, mm. people say our tech is better. Of course, it's 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 an award. You cannot compare it. These are different things. But but that's that's very very personal. Yeah, and all these awards are very personal. Especially after four or five years, I'm probably I'm probably the one that uh, that that is not needed in this equation because <laughs> I didn't develop the game. <laughs> you just got to sit back and do business relations. Yeah, and just all, all that easy some stuff. jokes about her story and then you know, <laughs> yeah, and just look, look confused in the back yeah, of a shot like, at the game yeah. awards. Yeah. <laughs> um, so speaking about yeah, your competitors or, or everything, everyone else is out there. If if there was like okay. another franchise that you'd love to do to like to make to like take over production on. Uh, like owned by somebody else or defunct, what would it be? <laughs> I think, uh, and we had a lot of these discussions, but I think we have just enough on our plate right now. Mm. And so, mm, in a world that cyberpunk doesn't exist and The Witcher doesn't, la, la, you're la, just la, done. La, la, la. No, no, no. I, I'll, I'll not answer it. Uh, it's. What we do requires 100% or actually 200% commitment. Mm. So um, we are not into buying and owning IPs just for the, for the sake of buying and owning them. Uh, we actually were approached by a lot of people with really cool IPs that we love mm. uh, to make a game. But we said, hey, if, if we do something, we have to have full creative control. So we have to own the IP. But again, for the sake of full creative control. Yeah. Um, so cyberpunk was was a choice from the heart and i think also it was good karma because we just had a great opportunity mm. uh to to acquire the rights but uh i, th I think we'll stop here for a while yeah do you think it, it, this will be like the witcher another 14 years you want to build that uh, brand or yes exactly and you know i'll give you the exact release <laughs> dates of uh, 77 78 79 I know mean, I might be wrong by a quarter or two, but is that is that a scary proposition though to like take on something and then be like, okay, like you're because clearly your your methodology, the mentality you, you guys have is like we're gonna do this fucking properly, we're yeah. gonna take it seriously, yeah. we're gonna do something big, yeah. and it's a new IP, so if yes. it's a new IP, you need to do, get out the gates. Yeah, and we're good. committed, and yeah. we're committed, so we'll take as much time as needed, and we want to make it huge. That's yeah. so that that's that. That is what what's on our mind, and you know, I, 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 I do business. I do in, in international development. I talk to the, mm, to media. I talk to gamers. Some our 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 face in many many conversations, and I represent the company. So of course, uh, I had like, hey, this let's maybe acquire this or that, mm. and then we start discussing, and and we all come to the same conclusion that. If we invest into something, and I'm I'm talking about investing our time, uh, we have to focus because uh, we cannot do it right if we'll do even two or three things at the same time. Yeah. It's just not possible, and and it's really regardless of how many people you have on board. It's Again, just like a mentality thing. It, it's or? a mentality. A, a little bit look like uh, at Rockstar. Why? The, right. Why there isn't a, a game every single year? Yeah. There is a reason for that. So yes, you, you can have a different model, be it, I don't know, the FIFA model or Call of Duty Assassin's Creed model, yeah? But I don't think it's our model. <laughs> yeah. And wh how is it you're able to do that, whereas companies like Ubisoft or Activision can't? Like, what is it about your... Presumably you have shareholders that also want to make sure you guys are turning a profit. What is it about that that, you know, you guys aren't beholden to that? Is it just your mentality? Oh, we're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and we openly tell our investors in um I mean, you if you have seen our 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 um, conference mm. we talk a lot about values about philosophy and there is a reason for that and and the, and the fact that we are quality obsessed and and it just we, we just want to 
send a very clear message to our investors that it's not a short-term thing. Yeah. It's not like, hey, expect amazing results every single quarter and crazy growth. We think that if we concentrate and focus and work really hard for, for a longer period of time, the effects will be there for them mm. because they're also very important uh, for us. Uh, but it's not hit and run. This is not like, hey, I'll make it 100% upside in just two years. No, you might not. You might even lose some money. Mm. But if you, if you believe in what we believe and we share, if we share the same belief in the same values, you will get a great return of your investment. We have proven that with the Witcher 3. So it, it, it's a very different thinking to mm. the usual, I would say, stock market thinking. But uh, I think it's right. So we know that some investors will never invest in us and uh, and some investors will leave. But we're okay with that. Yeah. And you're a pretty strong position there, presumably, as well, coming off the back of that. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was your favorite part of Wild Hunt? Because you were kind of like, like you said, you weren't developing it. You were obviously like getting builds of it as it was getting made. But when you finally sat down and played it, what was your what was on your favorite part? I mean, uh, I... I actually, I actually uh, did all the question marks. Uh, in Every one of them. Yeah, I'm, I mean, probably I have a couple <laughs> left in Skellige. <laughs> but uh, I, I would say everything about the Valen, the witches, the the the, the, the bloody Baron, mm. and botchling. Yeah, but but actually, so so maybe I'll put it differently. Um, what I love about RPGs are are the subquests and. Mm and and the freedom of exploration and one of my favorite games is obviously fallout one and two i i, I love them i play them a lot and even recently i started playing fallout one for a moment <laughs> you played fallout four um, yet no no <laughs> no i was playing fallout one i have it i have it on my list but mm. it, th th this is the one difficulty i have that uh it is a gigantic time commitment and i know yeah. that if i start i won't be able to stop and yeah what is it about so. people making games that take 200 hours to complete nowadays <laughs> asshole actually 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 you're you're, you're <laughs> laughing but uh, i have three kids and right, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then i travel like crazy doing all the stuff uh, for, uh, for the company uh, so I really have to play my gaming session right, and sometimes you know if I'm able to 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 play a couple hours a week, it's a lot. So in order to finish Witcher three and finish it with all the question marks and with all the sub quests, uh, <laughs> I did it with my work? wife that I'll go uh, for summer holidays with the family, mm. and from seven p.m. till whatever a.m. time, <laughs> I can play. And and actually, this one I finished the Witcher. Really? Yeah. When did you finish uh, it? Mm, during the summer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Through. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what have you been playing then since then? Uh, that fits into uh, those little pockets of time. I, sp I spent some time with uh, Darkest Dungeon, and mm. uh, um, I like this kind of. I don't want to say old school because it's not old school, but it's it, it's like a true to the bone RPG experience. Uh, maybe a little bit too punishing for me, yeah. to my liking. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, I've been playing some Fire Emblem. Uh, I just I just got the new one and yeah, you yeah. just bought your 50s. You said uh, yeah, I, I bought my 50s <laughs> because uh, I, no, it's not that I burned through them real quick, but uh, when, when I'm annoyed with it, I'm. I'm a guy, I'm, I'm not a collector. Yeah. I, the, the people are always laughing that on my desk at work I have nothing because I either sell things or I throw them away <laughs> uh, or I give them uh, away. I, I, I don't like to have too You're many good things. You're a good distributor. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's in your you say. So with the DS, is if, if, if it was gathering dust because I didn't have anything to play, yeah. I was asking my friend to sell it on eBay. So he <laughs> sold three or four of them <laughs> and I just got the fifth because new Fire Emblem is out. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm wondering once, when he will be selling this one. <laughs> once birthright I'm losing, is done. I'm losing a lot of money on each of them, probably like 80%. <laughs> Fair play. Yeah. Uh, did you play any of the other competitors last year then? You didn't play Fallout 4, you said. Did you play Metal Gear Solid or uh, Rocket League? I, or? Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm not into the, 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 the sporty games at all. And uh, the last Metal Gear Solid was on the GameCube. I, I oh, played. Twin Snakes you played, yes. really? Yes, yes, that's, wasn't, that's yeah. the one. Uh, wasn't even uh, made by Kojima, that the, one. The next one, yeah, the, the next one I have on my list is definitely Fallout 4, but, but again, it's, it's like the Witcher factor. It's 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 a bit spooky. It's like, ooh, 100 <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Martian, do you have this time? No, Scary. Yeah, De definitely. Uh, what I'm interested in the most in, in, in games, like, you know, personally as a gamer, it's... it's uh, either the RPG experience or the storytelling, or mm. ideally both, sometimes even more the storytelling. So I, I, 
Uh, and, and the perfect model for me uh, in terms of timing mm, was the Telltale model. Right, uh, so, okay. So I yeah. really enjoyed The Walking Dead, um, The Wolf Among Us, and I'm looking forward to the next one. I still haven't played the, the Michon miniseries, right. but the reviews are like, you know, mixed. So I wait, and see. wait and see. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, Martin. Thank you very much for Danny. coming in. Really appreciate it. Uh, Pleasure. You've got a talk on later today. Yeah. That'll be up on the GDC vault. Yeah, about what? our values, actually. So oh, I, really? I hope it will be interesting. So you just spoiled it all on this? No, but, but you will release it later on, won't you? Yeah, that's cool. Please. Point. Sorry. <laughs> actually, uh, I was just thinking, was it Obama you gave the yes, copy well, of Witcher 2? It, it wasn't me, it was our Prime Minister. Prime Minister? Prime Minister Donald Tusk, yep. Gave President Obama a copy of Witcher 2. Yeah, uh, the collector's edition, and actually when they called us, the <laughs> Ministry of Foreign Affairs was trying to call in, and the reception thought it was a joke. <laughs> so they actually contacted one of the... Uh, mm, uh, big, uh, big newspapers that uh, uh, we we're we we're working with in, in Poland, and they asked them to get in touch with us. Yeah, yeah. And we still thought it was, it was a joke, but we gave them a version, and then you know, on the TV in the evening. <laughs> but but you know, but it, so th that, that that's an old story. But then before, right before the three, when we showed The Witcher Three for the first time, mm. it was probably a week. Obama was in Poland. Right. So that was his second visit after the first one he got. So it would be pretty good timing, I have to say. <laughs> And then, so he's standing with uh, Prime Minister Tusk, and he's starting his talk. Thank you very much, um, Prime Minister, for inviting me again, and la, 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 la. And thank you for the gift I got, uh, mm, the, the, the Witcher 2 game, which is a symbol of Polish innovation. Oh, and we're beautiful. Like, yeah. <laughs> so so, <laughs> so that was amazing. And then, you know, quotes all over. And, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. So would you give President Trump a copy of Witcher 3? We'll see that. <laughs> we'll see that uh, if, if 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 this will be the case. Let's 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 worry next year. Uh, yeah, you're not worried. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, maybe we, we have we have some stuff going in Poland, so you might yeah. you might be hearing. You know, same we, here we, in Ireland. We have we have our Trump already. So <laughs> actually, a couple of. <laughs> yeah, I can appreciate that. Uh, Marcin Nowitzki, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you very much. Uh, really it was a pleasure. It. Thanks. Cheers.